Well, hi, boys and girls. We've got a little treat here for you. Um, we've got um, Chris and myself. Uh, uh, he's the chief engineer. Um, he's going to be uh, showing us a little bit about um, the, uh, the two Ford products, the Bronco and uh, my all-time favorite right here, um, the, um, um, the, the, the Maverick. I, I am really hopeful about this car. This looks to me to be the entry-level uh, entry vehicle. I mean, as a, someone who sent his kid to college, that would be the car I think would have been the perfect. So yeah. why don't you give us a little, uh, a little, a little uh, background on, on how this all went. Yeah, uh, well, the Maverick started with um, kind of three main customer uh, desires, and that was around uh, fuel economy. So not just good fuel economy, but great fuel economy. Uh, it was around versatility, and it was around affordability. Right? And all of that roped under the idea of having a capable built Ford Tough truck is, is kind of how it all started. And we were on a journey with each one of those right, to uh, establish the fuel economy, great fuel economy, fuel economy that could um, you know, go up against a sedan and beat a vehicle like a Civic. Mm. Um, versatility, the type of versatility that would allow the customer to uh, incorporate the things in their lifestyle during the week then also on the weekend, we can talk and I'll show you some of those elements. And then certainly affordability, right? Being able to price mm. a standard hybrid, you know, just below $20,000. So. Well, it's the magic number. And um, I think that this is going to be, like I say, this is the entrance way, I guess, would be the right, the right way to put it uh, for, um, um, for people who maybe want to have uh, uh, the baby step into EVs and and do it at a price that they can possibly afford. So yeah. to me, I don't want to put words in your mouth, yeah. but to me, this is like, this is Ford personified, right? That was uh, Henry the first idea, right? I, yeah. I need something for the masses. Something for the masses. And, yeah. um, and this, this kind of, to me, looks like, like I say, the ideal, the ideal truck uh, or vehicle uh, for a kid going to college. And there's nothing that I see out there that, uh, except for maybe a used car or something, nothing that kind of like compares with this. That's this exactly thing. right. We think the competition will be the c customers and we encourage them to, to go out and price shop <coughs> and compare because yeah. they'll be looking at used cars. So the, the technology that you get with a new car, the dependability certainly, and then the capability that we're going to offer. Yeah. Um, you know, when we exited uh, sedans, when the customers told us that sedan or that right. silhouette wasn't, the, wasn't right for them, this is mm -hmm. kind of our first uh, attempt to answer and put something at our showroom entry level, um, yeah. you know, for the customer and grow our Ford brand and bring those customers in and then keep them in the Ford brand, yeah. right? right? Get them into our, our Broncos and our Navigators and our uh, F-150s. Right, the gradual step up sure. as it were. Yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you show me around a little bit? Yeah. Um, I'd like to, like to have a look. Okay, well, absolutely. So maybe we'll start with the, uh, the interior. Yeah, I really want to get into this as well because this is how we, <laughs> I really like this kind of a concept. Um, uh, where we start moving from cardboard and uh, styrofoam to a real vehicle. Yeah, well, I'll take you on the journey. That speaks yeah. to low fidelity prototyping and our efforts to uh, not just embrace design thinking, but you know, my team become kind of students of design thinking. So I'll tie that in as we go into the to the back of kind of. Why don't you yeah. get inside and maybe I'll get on the other side and <coughs> have you take a look. So this is our XLT. This is our mid series variant. Mm -hmm. um, You'll see that we... So what does this run? This is a 19. Uh, this is about $23,000. Yep. Fully still equipped. affordable. Yeah. Still, still affordable. Oh, and even got mirrors. You even got mirrors. <coughs> yep. Um, so dual e, e, uh, ATC climate control, standard 8-inch screen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, five selectable drive modes, mm -hmm. um, uh, electronic park brakes, standard features like uh, or, uh, driver assist fe features like... Uh, automatic automatic emergency um, control. Um, the, the design itself was designed specifically to give a more planar look, to have a feel mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's reminiscent of some of our uh, early trucks, right? So you kind of yeah. feel yeah. That, that look. You don't have the undulations. Um, a lot, a lot of effort with respect to finding ways to, um, to contain small item storage. So everything from the Excellent. unique door trim panels where uh, designing the, the armrests in a way that can accommodate very tall water bottles, one and a half liter water bottles, right? Um, designing the, uh, the, we'll show you in the back as well, the, the back of the underneath storage um, or, uh, bins underneath the seat, but really trying to look at ways to maximize uh, small item storage, something oh, our customers told us very specifically, here. right? 
so a deep center console bin, um, floor mat up front, right? Inductive charging is available, but multiple places for, for your phone and, and for your, your small items. Right? Mm -hmm. Sunglasses and the like, pocket here and the like. Wow, way cool. I like it. Um, I would have probably put that in there, but that would have probably dragged the price up. <clears throat> At the end of the day, though, um, utilitarian, kind of truck-like. <clears throat> I'm, um, um, I, I, I don't know if you know, but I, I drive a, a Wrangler. And um, so I like that kind of uh, that kind of a view. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, this is not a this is not a bad uh, this is not a bad actually it's a great entry level truck. Um, and I guess we should mention uh, normally a truck is uh, rear wheel drive. This one's front wheel drive, correct? This, is, this particular variant is front wheel drive. We do offer all wheel drive. Cool. Let's um let's have a look at that. I. Uh, <clears throat> I'd like to see how that all got packaged. <clears throat> and don't worry, I'm, I'm not expecting a frunk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. So this you is got like rid of the secondary latch. Yes. Excellente. I, I'm happy about that. So, okay, so you have the four banger in here. Why, why didn't you go with the, the three? Well, this is the two and a half liter Atkinson engine paired no, no, with I mean hybrid. No, I mean the three cylinder engine. Understood. The pairing this engine with oh, the cool. hybrid technology, okay. the motor, is the is the right pairing to give us the the overall uh, performance that we need out of the vehicle. So you're okay. right. Within this this <coughs> lineup of, and we'll talk about the Bronco Sport and flexible architectures, we do offer in addition to hybrid technologies, um, we offer a two liter GTDI turbo and charge, which we offer as a step up um, on the Maverick. But the 1.5 liter three cylinder is offered on some of our sister products, um, but mm. not, not on the, the Ford Maverick. So how much battery do you, how much driving can you get out of this before the engine is gonna kick in? How much? Uh... Well, this is not a plug-in, so there's not a specific electric range. The vehicle is constantly uh, optimizing between uh, yeah. gas power or mechanical power and electrical power. So it's always mm. trying to find that optimization in mm -hmm. order to give um, up to 40 miles per gallon city, which is what we're currently targeting. Um, mm -hmm. So um, super excited again to be able to give that type of fuel economy. This is our standard <coughs> engine at 19,900, um, you know, for this size vehicle and be able to get civic like uh, fuel economy numbers. Well, I think it's a step forward and that's kind of like what I'm looking at. Um, I made a couple of predictions on where EVs are gonna be. 2028 is my number right now, simply because uh, if you look at history, from the 10 years that, uh, that uh, went from um, Boss Kettering inventing a starter motor to uh, no EVs when it was about 50-50 then, no EVs in the market at all, 10 years is about right, and I think that uh, EVs will probably take over, uh, like I say, uh, by about 2028. So I'm, I'm looking at this as a great, like I say, we moving into uh, the right direction. And I know uh, in talking to kids that are like 14 or 15, <clears throat> they definitely don't want one of those. Um, so I think that uh, the change is gonna come from culture as well as uh, technology. Yeah, and I think this is a great proof point for what you yeah. just said, this idea that we can price hybrid technology. We've been doing hybrids, we know hybrids at Ford, been doing for over 20 years, mm -hmm. right? And that's why we're so confident putting it into a built Ford tough truck. But the, the fact that we're able to price this much technology profitably at 20,000 speaks to that migration of technology with full battery electric as well, which is mm -hmm. gonna come, and yeah. it's coming quickly. Yeah, well, the one good thing is um, <clears throat> if, you, um, if you package this now for, for a hybrid, um, when do you think you'll be looking at either a plug-in or, or full e EV? Yeah, I can't, I guess. can't talk about what the, oh. the future plans are, but um, I'll just put it this way. We are playing to win with this product, mm. right? Um, we're first, it's an all-new segment, white <coughs> space segment, yeah. right? So excited to put, get this out here. We think it's the right fit now and certainly going to do everything um, we can on the Ford side to make sure that we, uh, we command that position moving forward. Well, I have a, a, another, uh, another reason that I, I'd like to see this thing succeed because... Um, I went down to Brazil and I saw a truck similar size and, and whatnot to this, and I recommended to that customer 
hey, you know what, you should import this. And that was like about five or six years ago. <clears throat> and I was told by um, uh, this Italian guy that I really didn't understand the market. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him. But I really think that this is a, a winning combination. Yeah. I know, I know uh, personally, um, when my wife saw the pictures of that vehicle, she was on it like white on rice. She thought it was going to be great. Yeah. I think you got a winner. Let's have a look at the back seat yeah, let me before show you the, we take okay, off. Sure. And, <clears throat> so once you get into that, I want to show you a cool feature that will require you to get out of the Okay, vehicle. so first off, I can get in. And um, okay, so uh, I got, I'm a short guy, but I got plenty of room for knees. What do we got here? I can't. So you have a dual USB and a 110 volt inverter, 400 oh, cool. watt. Um, this is a cool feature, a removable uh, cup holder that we're going to offer as part of a suite of uh, accessories that fit into what we're calling our Ford integrated tether system. And, and that what, way the guy in the center can actually uh, kind of get his legs in there. Yeah. yeah. And what's cool about this is we are going to provide um, the, the CAD, the file, for our customers of this footprint. Oh. oh, so they can make their own whatever. 3D printing is really important for our yeah, customer, a subset yeah. of them. Makers, so yeah. there's really some cool things. And um, so we're going to allow them to buy in a really affordable package with trays and cord uh, holders and cup holders. Um, mm. But we'll encourage them to get creative in that space. And well, what's really that's... cool is the relationship, what you're holding into the hand, with what's underneath the seat also. Oh, really? So let me show you that. Let's get, let me yeah. get back out. <clears throat> So oh, again, back hey, to easy out too. small item storage. Oh, perfect. We've got these really big bins. Now this is the hybrid variant. So we do, did have to put the 12 volt battery here. On yeah. the two liter GTI, the, this is not here. But the really great amount of storage underneath the seat. Mm. And the accessories that our customers will buy from us or do their own, it's a great storage location for them as well. You'll see that there's multiple slots that if they don't want to have it in here because they have their five passengers, they can store it in underneath the seat easily. We'll also be offering accessories bed um, tray dividers here as part of this package mm -hmm. and again uh, encourage our customers to to get creative in that space when they download the uh, the CAD with their 3D printers. Yeah well <clears throat> one of the things that uh, that we've been really surprised at is how many um, how many Tesla owners because basically there's the competition how many Tesla owners have made little doodads exactly. that fit into the uh, into the Tesla vehicle yeah. and are selling them? It's like a little cottage industry it kind is. of a thing. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and again, the cottage industry was Henry Ford's big deal. I, I was at one of I I actually uh, uh, did some work in one of those little places when we were trying to figure out what to do during one of the downturns uh, with all the union guys, and we we went to a little place in Northville. That, uh, that had been uh, abandoned for who yes. knows how long. And um, yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was a great little success story. We banged out uh, shipping racks to, uh, to uh, you know, <laughs> I went into the union hall <clears throat> and I said, um, <clears throat> who, um, who's, uh, who's into swinging uh, sledgehammers? And there was a bunch of guys lifting weights. Oh, <laughs> so <laughs> we brought all these guys in it. <laughs> And that's how we, we oh, straightened cool. them out, just whacked them with, with shipping hammers until they were, or sorry, uh, uh, with sledgehammers until the, the shipping racks were straight and then out they went. Yeah, so it was a kind of a cool little operation. There's, there's you know. this idea of designing a vehicle as a platform for a customer to interact with. Right, yeah. That you're seeing here, and it's, it's what I'm going to show you in the, in the bed as well, of, um, kind of integrating the vehicle in a way that speaks to their lifestyle, I think yeah, is what you just described. Right. So that's something we explicitly talked about and tried to design into the product as we developed it. <clears throat> well, I think, uh, I think this is really cool. I just wanted to try one thing, just back where it came from. I wanted to have a peek here. Oops. Do the uh, seats fold down then? Or they fold back. Fold the only it? thing that's back here, though, is the jack, so um, oh, it right. doesn't fold full flat. <clears throat> all right. Okay, good. So let's, uh, let's have a look at uh, the back end. Oh, wow, does this come with the uh, So this the is an package? option. We have multiple tonneau covers oh, available, okay. um, including the, the roll-up tonneau cover. So if it's okay, I'll tell you a little about the journey of, of yeah. the bed. Um, early in the program, we knew once we um, had a solution to deliver the fuel economy, right, that our analytical engineering said we could achieve the type of fuel economy I described, yeah. And once we also knew that we could be profitable at the pricing structure that, that I described, um, what we wanted to do was lean more into the versatility that the customer was asking for. Mm. Um, and specifically, 
tie the lifestyle, their lifestyle to the product. This customer is, we refer to them as a doer. Um, they do DIY projects at home. Um, mm -hmm. They do things like Ikea hacks. We talked about 3D printing. And right. so this bed, when we started, it was obviously just, there's nothing to it. It was just a sheet metal. And we followed the, what we call the human-centered design thinking framework. Lots of different frameworks. It's the one we chose. And it set us on the journey of some of these prototypes. Maybe we could start over there and I'll walk sure. you all the way to the metal. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Can we start with the cardboard one first? The cardboard one is, is the kind of the start point for us. Yeah. And actually there was one even before this. Um, design thinking, <clears throat> the process says you kind of start with the central question. Our central question was how could we tie the bed? It's a four and a half foot bed, so it's a little shorter than the standard we have in our F series. But how could we maximize the utility of the bed and offer it in a way that enables the customer's lifestyle? And this process that uses, you go out and you do uh, research. And our research took us to places like Home Depots, Lowe's, community colleges, um, REI's recreational stores. And what we saw the customer doing was a, quite a bit of DIY solutions inside their bed. We offer mm. a suite of accessories, um, and there's a suite of accessories outside of uh, Ford, that are, but they can be costly. And so customers were doing their own stuff. So we started to categorize what we saw them doing. Um, and then came the fun part, ideating, right? Going through this ideation process of how could we design in features to enable the customer to do some fun stuff. And you start with this low fidelity prototype and you work your way to higher fidelity through this progression. Um, so what this is, is this is started off as a 2D um, <coughs> full size uh, demonstration of the bed mm -hmm. that we folded into cardboard. And you could see sticky notes on here. And it's all point in time and I'm sure many have fallen off but starting to think through as we looked at those categories of DIY solutions that were out there, what type of enablements could we design in that would make the solution easier, that would make it uh, safer in some ways, and just make it a better experience. So mm -hmm. the easy example is, uh, is a bike rack. Um, so customers, because there wasn't any designed in enablements, they're having to build kind of elaborate structures, two by four structures. They're yeah. clumsy, get them in and out of their garage, not fun, PVC. Something as simple as locating sheet metal depressions in an ideal location from the, from the cab back that will allow you to slot a wheel that will fit the fork. So it, uh, um, a four by four can fit in here. You put the cleats on top of the, of, the, of, the, of the wood and you can have a, for $30, a bike rack. Now, if you want to buy our Yakima accessory bike rack, for $300, it's awesome, please do. But if you don't, if you'd rather put that money towards your bike or something else, there's a solution for you. Um, we saw customers with cargo management systems actually drilling into the, in some cases, into their older trucks, yeah. drilling <coughs> in to find the reinforcements yeah. in the vehicle. Well, so, we should mention that voids your warranty. <coughs> yeah. Not a good idea. And many of these vehicles that we're, we were looking at were far out of the warranty period, right? Because mm, again, yeah, this yeah, price point. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, an easy solution for us was to give away captured fasteners, tell the customer what the torques are, what the sizes are, and show them, which we're gonna post, we have videos on our Ford Maverick website, show them how to build their own cargo management rail system with a little bit of uh, mm -hmm. bar stock from Home Depot for $20. So that's the type of thought process that went in, some examples. Um, when you go from cardboard, you, you start to mature the solution set with all the different engineers and cross-functional team members that we had yeah. working here. So you get manufacturing's input, you get design's input, you get marketing input, and you start to progress to the next level of fidelity, which is shown here. This is yeah. foam um, milled out of the, the CAD that resulted, and you could start to see the, the progression. So some of those things that were moving around in cardboard start to become more real. You can have conversations about man ease of manufacturing. You can start using things like the customer would and confirm that your solution sets work. And then ultimately, you move to the metal bed, mm -hmm. um, right, and, and, and follow that process. So really a great example of us kind of embracing this human-centered design approach and something we're, we're really proud of. Even things like um, a multi-position tailgate is what came out of, out of this, where I'll show you on this one, actually. You know, a affordable solution. When I'm at Home Depot or Lowe's and I want to carry Ah. Plywood, set the angle of the bed to be equivalent to the, the wheel arches so I can fit up to 20, almost 20 sheets. I think it's 18 sheets of plywood. Embrace and then make sure you give tie downs, right, for that solution yeah. set. So right. a great example of kind of a... And simple cheap and cost effective. And cheerful uh, solution set yeah. for the customer. So 
Simple but not really basic, cool. right? Yeah. <clears throat> and then when I want to put it back, there's a little tab, you just pull, you pinch it and take it back. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of the journey that this, this bed was mm. on. So we have videos posted already <clears throat> of some of those mechanical solutions. The, the other thing we're really excited about in this DIY space is we're going to have electrical DIY as well. Now this was an early prototype, so I'm going to have to use your imagination a little bit. But there are plugs right here that pop out, and on the back side of that is access to a 12-volt connector. Oh, right? so you can put whatever you want Yep, in. with pigtails. So now what you can do <coughs> is we're going to show you how to wire it into if you want to put an air compressor in here from Harbor Freight for $20, which some of our engineers have done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to drill through the firewall to access the power distribution box like we saw customers doing. Yeah. You don't have to tap into the brake lights, which we don't want customers to, to do to access 12-volt. Yeah, so if you want to put in some customer... Um, you know, marine speakers in here, right? You right. can do that, you can have yeah. some fun. The one thing that we think is gonna be, uh, that we designed in in addition to that is, a lot of customers are putting aftermarket bed lighting. So you wire it up, there are attachment holes in here for those aftermarket, so they don't have to use adhesive, they could just use a Christmas tree <coughs> connector yeah. um, and put that in, and then they wire it to this same button that's right here. Well, I was just looking at this yep. button here. Yep. What's uh? So that's 400 watt, um, 110 wow. volt inverter. That's one of our packages that we offer, including the bed light. So, you, so mm -hmm. that will uh, essentially power everything that the customer we think is within reason, what they'll use at their tailgates, which uh, they'll use it during a camping uh, trip. So um, kind of the right solution set for, for this customer's. Mm -hmm. Can we just open that up? Yeah. Um, I'm curious about any kind of So we tried to maximize that. any open space, this idea <coughs> yeah. of the platform in the sheet metal. Um, there's this really deep, if you put your hand in, we gave a false tray, but you can fit your trailer, um, your tow rod, yeah, tow rod right in there, which yeah. is great. And or, you know, bungee cords and, and, and the like in there. And again, you can also use this as a repository by taking off a few fasteners to put other... DIY solutions in here. Yeah. Compressor is the one that we uh, are having some fun with right now. Um, our engineers are some. Well, this is all cool stuff. I uh, I did notice something else that I yeah. I'd like to get my hands on and bring right back here. <coughs> ah, perfect. So, am I to assume that this is uh, kind of like your your structure? This is through? our D pillar. So that's where I just was showing you that plug. Yeah. That's this plug here. So what this was showing is how the <coughs> customer yeah. will, uh, we were trying to make sure the experience of routing that wire up into the button that I showed was a good experience. Mm. So that's a kind of an early prototype as we were running that out with just some um, stereo lift parts. So this is kind of like, I've got at least four or five guys at work that have got their own units and we've got a, one at work as well. but. <coughs> But this is kind of like the fast way to get the job done. People, <clears throat> it's one thing to look at CAD, but it's quite another to pick it up and touch it, feel it, yes. you know, lick it if you want to. But that's the kind of stuff that, uh, that really makes things go fast. And I'm, when I heard that you did this in three years, my first question was, I mean, there's a platform that you were working on. I'm guessing that you're going to transfer that and on and on. Yeah. But three years is a short period of time yeah. uh, to make something happen. So um, I, like I said, I did read a little. I think it'd be a great idea if, <clears throat> if maybe you could talk before I start sure. coughing my brains out and then um, okay. tell us a little Some bit about that Some of the enablers of how we went yeah. fat. Um, <clears throat> it starts with flexible architectures, so, which is a little bit different than just platforms in the traditional sense. And the way we think about it is um, taking a big Lego, and I'm going to talk in terms of Legos, like a platform, and breaking it into smaller Legos that you can then um, modify in a way where you could still get those efficiencies from an engineering standpoint. You could still get those efficiencies within the supply base as far as scale economies, but you can tailor the solution to give products that you know, are as different as what we see here. Okay, so mm. it's not reuse of the exact same part necessarily. It's taking the foundational element, that initial Lego, which has <coughs> the solutions around normally, how do you solve like basic physics problems, right? How do you know yeah. that this part's gonna last 10 years, 100,000s, right? You wanna maintain that, because re-engineering that part, part of it is very expensive and timely. But if you could take that and then build on it, 
incremental smaller Legos to tailor it mm. to the product, right? To give 1,500 pound payload truck versus an off-road, you know, uh, rock hauler or rock uh, climber that we have here. That's, yeah. that's kind of the foundational element. Right. So that's the step forward. And what's really helped us in that space is the convergence of flexible manufacturing on the Ford side and with our supply base mm -hmm. is we now can really extract out those efficiencies without the part necessarily being exactly the, the same. Right. And sometimes when you have the exact same, you can dilute the experience a little bit for the customer or you're sub-optimizing you know, for that yeah. specific product. Right, so. and that's the, that's the pathway that you don't want to take. Right. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I, um, I, uh, I was interested in seeing this. I'm even more interested in seeing the lightning. So is a lot of our, uh, our viewers. I mean, when we put the lightning up and started talking about it, when you're going to get one, when you... Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> hopefully <clears throat> I can get on the list for that one. I'm very, very excited. But you know what? This is... <laughs> I, I absolutely love the fact that you can get it under 20 grand. 22 grand tricked out like this. Um, I, I, if my son was still going to school, I'd probably, I don't know, throw in an extra couple of grand simply, you know, because he's a relative and stuff. So, uh, <laughs> We're okay so with that. We're okay with I, that. I, <laughs> yeah. So, so I'm, I'm pretty excited and very happy to see what you're going on in here. And I believe that this is a, a perfect first step into, into EV. And, um, so anyway, I'd like to, uh, uh, I'd like to thank you for sharing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, um, and, and yeah, thank really, you, thank you very yeah. much for being on Monroe Live. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, it's an Thanks honor. so much. Thank you. Thank you. So anyway, um, you just got a little sneak preview of the, uh, of the Maverick. Um, thank you again, Chris, for, uh, for getting us a chance to uh, have a look at this. Um, we're in this cool old building. Everything's kind of like magic for me. So here's the deal. Um, uh, this car won't be out until 2022, correct? Or is it later this year? Uh, later this year. <clears throat> uh, when? Fall. Oh, okay, so fall. Shortly. Uh, shortly. So if you're looking for something small and you want to move away from maybe a, a Toyota or something, maybe this is, a, maybe this is your, your best, and, uh, uh, best option, I think. So anyway, uh, thanks again for viewing here at Monroe and & Associates uh, and uh, Monroe Live. Um, keep tipping those cashiers, and thanks so long. Have, have a great day. Bye now.